At Eurosatory this year, you launched the next links, the longer one, and this time you brought it to AUSA to aim for a potential US Army requirement. And you are teamed with that for Raytheon, I understand. We are. Thank you, Chris. It's uh, fantastic to see you again and uh, here in the US now. So uh, with the acceleration of the Bradley replacement program now called Optionally Manned Fighting Vehicle, we see a real requirement um, uh, for Lynx, the Lynx KF-41 to be uh, fairly unique in the market to address that requirement. We decided very early on that we needed a strong US partner and who better in terms of a strong US partner than Raytheon. Raytheon really uniquely have a capability and, and an expertise with the US Army, particularly around some of the, the complex weapon systems C4I and systems integration that really rounds out our team and gives a unique offering uh, uh, that re will really uh, uh, differentiate this platform on the battlefield and restore some of the combat power to NATO and the US Army. From my point of view it really is a modular system and that allows you to tailor to meet individual customers needs and I think most of the customers do need that, they want lots of variants and Lynx has got the capability to deliver that to the customer. Yeah, 100%. We designed it to be essentially the medium weight capability for high-end uh, uh, forces, like here in the US or Land for, with Land 400 Phase 3 in Australia. Um, and one of the key things is, is that modularity, um, everything from an APC, command, an infantry fighting vehicle, right up to and including a potential artillery uh, uh, system on the top of it. But re really where we're going to leverage the, the Raytheon rela relationship here is the mission pods on the turret as well. Um, their third-gen FLIR capability combined with uh, things like the Coyote unmanned aerial vehicle the quick kill active defence system, uh, tow missile and the franchise there and even some things like Stinger can all be integrated on the platform and really give uh, a capability that doesn't exist uh, today on the battlefield. I think from memory you've got about 18 tonnes payload which can be the mission system, the armour, the ammunition, everything else. That's quite a lot compared with some other vehicles. Yeah, it's huge. We, uh, when we did the concept design work, we started this three years ago and looked at the future battlefield. There's some of those fights that, that, that could happen in the future in mega cities, and that mega city fight with very close engagement ranges requires a very, very high level of uh, passive protection. Even active defence systems don't uh, work uh, so effectively at that uh, close range uh, distance. So, so that's part of it. And then the other part, when we look at some of the conceptual designs, is an artillery system. Uh, a normal turret is around 16,000 kilos. And so to put a 155mm 52 calibre turret on this, that 18,000 kilo payload gives us that. So if you think about the US Army and all of the options that they have on a Bradley AMPV type chassis right now, Lynx could be that future system for the US Army. And the user wants more volume, more payload, more protection. You've got a lot of volume in this vehicle. I think you can get nine dismounts plus a crew of three in some versions. Absolutely. The, behind us right now we've got the, uh, the configuration with eight seats and a manned turret. Um, so that manned turret with up to nine in the back, and we showed that at Land Forces Conference down in Australia is a completely functional configuration including stowage for the equipment of the, uh, the full infantry section in the back and, uh, and that's uh, quite interesting to the market. None of our customers really want to split an infantry section between two vehicles because it's a real problem when they get out of the vehicle because they have to regroup and they haven't orientated themselves and had their orders together. So uniquely we can do that and, and I don't think any other vehicle can do that on the market right now. And you can bring in 360 situational awareness as it dismounts know exactly what's going on when they dismount. Absolutely. In fact, the uh, the vehicle, in terms of situational awareness, the uh, the vehicle has uh, 20 cameras on it right now, just doing situational awareness. So the turret itself has 12 uh, uh, cameras doing the situational awareness. That's the high-end system that's part of the situational awareness feeding um, targeting data to the crew. Uh, and then the crew in the, the, the chassis itself has a second system, including driver day and night cameras and a full 360-degree situational awareness system for the, for the soldiers in the back. So uh, 20 cameras just doing local situational awareness. Thanks very much, Ben. We look forward to following the next next generation of interest. Thanks a lot.